हेलो स्टूडेंट्स वेलकम टू रॉयल पैलेस पीयू कॉलेज जमखंडी ऑनलाइन क्लासेस माय नेम इज संजय सर एंड आई टीच बायोलॉजी एज यू नो दैट वी हैव ऑलरेडी स्टार्टेड अ चैप्टर ऑफ फर्स्ट पीयूसी दैट इज बायोलॉजिकल क्लासिफिकेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी फिनिश्ड वन टॉपिक आल्सो एंड दैट वाज introduction to some basic concepts which come under this biological classification or any biological explanations today we'll enter into another topic and that topic name is introduction to kingdoms of classification dear students kingdoms of classification or any other classification relating to living organisms was not at all an easy topic to understand but it should be the basic sensible point we need to understand it is from the beginning only that how actually the organisms got created what were the basic characteristics the scientists used to divide the organisms is it anatomy is it morphology is it some internal physiology etc etc now it comes to a basic sensible point that what were the points the scientists were considered or what was the reason the classification was needed see i have explained in my previous videos also that if the organism looks similar in all the aspect and a lot of organisms or many organisms with different species they also look alike then there is no need at all for the classification but this is a biological world and in this world the organisms are different they are different with respect to their internal modifications they are different with respect to their morphological modifications also now it will be quite different for us to classify it will be quite different for us to understand them depending upon the generalized characters now the scientists also felt felt the same thing in the beginning it was only with respect to food with respect to shelter and with respect to clothes the organisms were divided if i wanted cotton i'll be looking into a sheep if i wanted to eat meat then i'll be looking into those organisms which can give meat to me and if i wanted to make some shelter kind of thing then i'll be organizing organisms into another categories but dear students is it the only thing that we have to consider no these are only the basic considerations which will not tell us about the classification of organisms we need to have a basic scientific understanding a scientific methodology so that the organisms can be divided easily now many year scientists tried in the beginning as i mentioned it was only about the human needs human needs and depending upon the human needs the organisms were divided but there was a scientist called as aristotle dear students let us start the content by taking an example of the first ever scientist who tried explaining the organisms categories depending upon the scientific methodologies let me tell you aristotle was not a greater scientific methodologist because during that time the scientific inventions and technologies were not up to the mark but by utilizing those generations techniques and technologies or simple understandings the ains the aristotle divided the organisms so point number 1 is that aristotle was the first scientist who divided the organisms with respect to scientific understandings he was a greek philosopher we already know about him he did another thing he actually worked on two types of organisms first category was with respect to plants and another category was with respect to animals category number 1 that was with respect to plants he saw the nature he saw the different colored plants different fruit having plants 
different flower having plants and he divided those plants remember only with respect to their morphology some were very very tall some were used for the wood some were used for the construction of house some were used for the medicinal purposes also so depending upon their qualities aristotle divided them into three categories the bigger larger household activity having trees the middle one a little bushy natured shrubs and finally the one which is having medicinal importance and they are called as herbs aristotle was the person who divided the plants depending upon the morphological and a little useful nature of the humans he divided them into three categories and they are one is a tree another one is a shrub and finally another content is that is i call it as the herb as you are saying in my ppt here that he was the person who did all this work now the first one is the aristotle about his work with respect to the plants he did trees shrubs and herbs classification now he did another one work also that was with respect to animals now he was very curious about the internal structure internal physiology what are the internal modifications of animals but as i mentioned in the beginning that the science was not that much improved during that time so it was limited and with respect to that limitations he found out one thing he created an analysis and depending upon that analysis he found out that majority of the organisms have a red color as their blood color but it does not mean that as i mentioned majority it does not mean that all the organisms have the same kind of color of the blood that is red he found out that variety of organisms are there and these organisms having different colored content in their blood sometimes it is hemoglobin that will give you the red color but it is another content also that will give you different colored options also that is the pigment which is present in it now according to aristotle he divided the animals depending upon the color of the blood that is into two sections first one the organisms with the red colored blood he called them as enema organisms and the second one as the organisms without the red color or other colored blood he called them as enema organisms as you are seeing in my ppt that it is enema the organisms with the red blood and enema that is organisms without the red blood or you can say that with the different colored blood so first thing is that here octopus that is blue colored blood having organism skink a green color blood having organism humans we have hemoglobin and that is red colored blood having organisms we even have got another example called as oscillated ice fish which is having almost colorless or transparent kind of color or transparent background with respect to their blood color now dear students this is with respect to aristotle and its early classification of organisms now the question sir is this enough to classify the organisms no sir is this the only kind of a procedure wherein which we can classify the organisms no there were so many explanations there were so many understandings there were so many considerations characteristics and depending upon those characteristics different kind of kingdoms of classification were created in the beginning by looking at some of the basic characteristics there was a scientist called as carolus linnaeus and this scientist 
divided the entire the kingdom or life kingdom living kingdom into two sections he divided the life into two sections considering all the plants will be under one kingdom and all the animals will be under another kingdom he mentioned them as kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia so and he see here plantae and animalia this is even called as metaphyta and metazoa the first scientist who created two kingdom classification and was carolus linnaeus and he divided the entire living kingdom into two kingdoms and that is kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia now kingdom plantae includes all the plants in it kingdom animalia includes all the animals in it just by saying the plants and animals it does not mean that whatever that we see in general green in color is a plant and in general the one which is moving is an animal it is wrong see there are a lot of characteristics we need to find in case of plants also and there are a lot of characters we need to find in case of animals also there were some mistakes there were some organisms there were organisms which were placed in kingdom plantae and the characters of kingdom plantae are not at all suitable to those organisms there were some organisms which were placed in kingdom animalia and these organisms once again were not at all suitable for kingdom animalia the organisms which can prepare their own food for their growth and development are called as autotrophs and plants but some of the organisms were there which were placed in kingdom plantae do not show those kind of characteristics then of course we need to remove them from kingdom plantae there were some organisms as far as the animalia is concerned they say that animals are those organisms which can move from one place to another place which are heterotrophic in nature so we should have to understand that those organisms which do not prepare their food for their growth and development and they are completely dependent on other organisms are called as the heterotrophic organisms but in case of kingdom animalia which was created by two kingdom classification was even having some of the organisms which were autotrophic in nature as i mentioned that this is a beautiful world of biology anything can happen here mistakes can happen and variety of organisms we see so there was a creation of three kingdom classification and it was created by ernst Haeckel in the year of 1866 he removed some of the organisms which were not at all suitable for plantae and animalia and he created a specific a different kind of a kingdom called as kingdom protista dear student we have introduced another kingdom here apart from the previous two in the beginning it was only the two kingdom which we were studying that was kingdom plantae and animalia and it was created by carolus linnaeus now it has improved in its classification level it removed some of the organisms and created its own group and that group name is kingdom protista kingdom protista contains the organisms which can move from one place to another place which are smaller which are unicellular which are not at all a part of plantae and animalia sometimes even we can see the nucleus in protistan members sometimes it's highly impossible so ernst haeckel found out these particular characteristics and he created another kingdom that is kingdom protista once again let me tell you this kingdom protista is the one which was introduced and which said itself that i am the third kingdom so during ernst haeckel's classification three kingdom classification included the kingdom plantae kingdom animalia and finally kingdom protista so once again the question 
once again another some more improvements in the science some more improvements in the technology which resulted into identification of minor mistakes from kingdom protista kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia now once again the scientists were thinking that these are the organisms not at all suitable for the characteristics of protista these are the organisms not at all suitable for the characteristics of plantae and once again these not at all suitable for animalia also now what to do they removed some of the organisms from all these three kingdoms and they created another kingdom called as kingdom monera now dear student this is the fourth kingdom called as kingdom monera and this kingdom monera includes all the unicellular smaller prokaryotic organisms or microscopic organisms these not at all come under the characteristics of protista plantae and animalia hence there was a creation of another kingdom called as monera if someone asks you which one is the fourth created kingdom your answer should be monera and the scientist who created this one was copeland in the year of 1956 and finally we need to enter into the last kingdom called as five kingdom classification created by r h whitaker in the year of 1969 he thought that we added some of the organisms in animalia and these animalia organisms having those characters are not at all suitable for some of the organisms some organisms are even present in protista and those are not at all having the characteristics which shouldn't be there now what to do he found out a special kind of organisms called as the fungi the fungi are the kingdom mycota he created a newer kingdom called as kingdom mycota or kingdom fungi if someone asks you a question that which is the next or the fifth created kingdom you should answer it as the kingdom fungi or mycota so dear students kingdom mycota includes all the fungi in nature kingdom monera includes all the unicellular prokaryotic organisms in nature kingdom protista includes the unicellular eukaryotic organisms in nature and plantae and animalia are the multicellular eukaryotic organisms in nature the system of classification started from two kingdom classification which was created by carlos linnaeus next entered into three kingdom classification which was created by ernst haeckel and the introduced kingdom was protista then we entered into the fourth kingdom classification introduced by the copeland and the introduced kingdom was monera the last one is five kingdom classification called as the fungi included kingdom created by r h whitaker so let me repeat two kingdom classification plantae and animalia three kingdom classification plantae animalia and protista four kingdom classification plantae animalia protista and monera five kingdom classification plantae animalia protista monera and finally the fungi dear students we need to understand once again that is this the final kingdoms no once again the scientists in create some more questions and for that once again there will be some more classifications also sixth kingdom classification is there seventh kingdom classification is there eighth kingdom classification is there variety of scientists with respect to their own methodologies of asking questions and with the improved techniques and technologies it is quite difficult to place them into one shelter or one roof different organisms are there which are having different characteristics and we cannot place them into one category so let us enter into the next slide which explains us about the reason why the two kingdom classification was created as you see that here the kingdom plantae and kingdom animalia kingdom plantae includes all the plants and kingdom animalia includes all the animals now they took some of the characteristics such as locomotion locomotion means 
the motion athwa movement from one place to another place and second point as response to external stimulus if someone touches you do you feel it or not if any kind of uh, smell is there do you smell it or not if any kind of hearing is there do you hear it or not if any kind of thinking capacity is there do you hear it or not do you think it or not do you see it or not do you feel it or not all those are the stimuli and how your body gives the answer is called as response to the external stimuli the third point how they actually eat mode of nutrition fourth point how actually they conduct and they move the impulses from one body is a part to another body so there will be one organ there are so many organs in our body and these organs conduct their own metabolic reactions their own so many sophisticated physiological reactions what about these reactions which are present in different organisms they mentioned this one as conductile and contractile systems and last but not the least the important content that was cell wall cell wall is an external covering for a lot of cells which helps in locomotion which even helps in movement which even helps in exchange of molecules inside outside which even helps us signaling to neighboring cells a lot of things are there these are functions of cell wall some organisms lack these cell walls and some have so these are the five different different characteristics and by looking at these characteristics the carolus lineus divided the organisms so the first one locomotion in case of locomotion now kingdom plantae do not show any kind of locomotion that is movement from one place to another place and kingdom animalia organisms show the movement the animals the animals even even show the movement of the animals even show the response to external stimulus the animals can eat the animals do have the conduction and contractile properties but the animals only one thing that is the cell wall is absent the rest thing are already observed in the slide itself please do observe them in the kingdom plantae there were organisms like bacteria algae fungi bryophytes pteridophytes gymnosperms and angiosperms were added we can go to a point that angio gymno teredo bryo all these are generally plants these can be added in the kingdom plantae no problem even the algae also but as far as the bacteria and fungi are there bacteria are unicellular organisms and fungi are multicellular organisms we cannot place bacteria in the kingdom plantae and we cannot place fungi once again in the kingdom plantae and the characteristics of kingdom plantae are not at all similar to bacterial organisms and fungi organisms these were the problems and kingdom animalia included all the invertebrates so what are the invertebrates the one which is having the dorsal nerve cord the one which is having the ventral heart ship the one which is having the backbone all these are invertebral characteristics which are actually present in the animals we even call them as chordates non chordates etc etc vertebrates invertebrates etc etc so these were the characters which were studied by the carolus lineus to divide it of course as i mentioned about bacteria and fungi they should be removed from the group now two kingdom classification a little introduction it was created by carolus and lineus two created uh, kingdoms were kingdom animalia and kingdom plantae in our syllabus we even study the drawbacks what were the limitations of kingdom class two kingdom classification what were the minus points of two kingdom classification what were the disadvantages of two kingdom classification or why there is a creation of three kingdom classification dear students let us study now the first point as you can see in the photo here that we have got so many examples like bacteria cyanobacteria fungi fern moss gymnosperms etc etc the first major problem with respect to two kingdom classification was that some organisms do not have true nucleus 
and they are called as prokaryotes and some organisms do have pronucleus and they are called as eukaryotes as far as the kingdom plantae is concerned the basic characteristics of kingdom plantae is that all the members of kingdom plantae should be eukaryotic multicellular in nature now the point here is it added so many prokaryotic organisms such as as you see bacteria and cyanobacteria and some of the organisms eukaryotic such as fungi moss fern gymno and sperm angiosperms they were all included in only one kingdom that was kingdom plantae that was one of the major drawback let me repeat it again that the kingdom plantae included both varieties of organisms with respect to true nucleus some they do not have some they do have the organisms which have the true nucleus where should be added in the kingdom plantae category but the organisms which did not have these kind of uh, characteristics were also added i told you the examples such as bacteria and cyanobacteria this is the first mistake of two kingdom classification now the second thing is that the presence of this cell wall the organism it may be prokaryotic in nature but it was having cell wall that's why we added in plant kingdom the organism which was having cell wall and that was also eukaryotic in nature that's why we added in kingdom plantae so these are the characteristics which made a beautiful misunderstanding of addition of organisms into one category as i said that kingdom plantae included prokaryotic and eukaryotic organisms only by the factor called as the cell wall the organisms had cell wall that's why they were added in plantae immaterial of prokaryotic and eukaryotic and that was wrong in nature okay that is the second point to consider let us go to third point now in this case also as i mentioned kingdom plantae members should have to have all the multicellular organisms but it even included some of the unicellular organisms also the third point says that the kingdom plantae included unicellular organisms in kingdom plantae which shouldn't have to be such as chlamydomonas and spirogyra were placed in only one category that is algae as far as chlamydomonas is concerned it is unicellular in nature and as far as spirogyra is concerned it is multicellular in nature right so spirogyra multicellular chlamydomonas unicellular it shouldn't be if you are adding spirogyra then it is okay no problem but if you are adding chlamydomonas it is unicellular we should not have to be added in kingdom plantae that is a wrong thing okay let's go to the next point you see two photos here the first one is with respect to fungi and the next one is with respect to plants fungi was added the complete fungi members were added in kingdom fungi kingdom plantae it shouldn't be so kingdom fungi members having different characteristics and plantae having different characteristics how to add these two so there wasn't a particular characterization so that we can divide these two the fourth point says that it did not differentiate between the heterotrophic fungi and the autotrophic green plants the meaning of heterotrophic is that it is the one which is not at all possible to produce their own food for their growth and development they are completely dependent on other organisms and the autotrophic means the organisms which are completely creative of their own they are independent of their own and they by utilizing the sunlight they can create their own food for its for their own growth and development since they were all added it is not at all quite a good match for the organisms to create it under kingdom plantae so this was the next mistake of two kingdom classification now let us it was a quite a discussion about the cell wall cell wall is an external covering which protects the inner contents to the outer content they said that the cell wall was the major fact 
so that all the organisms all the plants all the animals and all the uh, plant related organisms were added into kingdom plant sorry i included animals here so fungi was having a cell wall of course so that's why it is added in kingdom plant carlos linnaeus said plants also having cell wall of course that's why the plants were also added in kingdom plant carlos linnaeus said it's it's good but the composition of a cell wall that is the chemical material which is present in the cell wall of a fungi is different than the plant the fungi's external covering that is the cell wall composition is made up of chitin and as far as the plant cell wall is made up of cellulose both are different chemicals having different rigidity different characters and these characters are not at all involved or not at all mixed up with one another this was the last drawback of two kingdom classification created by carlos linnaeus now finally the last slide we need to study and this is five kingdom classification and this was as i mentioned earlier created by r h whitaker he created five kingdoms such as kingdom plantae animalia already were there kingdom protista already was there kingdom monera already created in fourth kingdom finally he created kingdom fungi he used some of the characters such as the first one here as the cell wall the cell wall material uh, and the cell type material cell type it is of two types one which is having a true nucleus called as eukaryotic which do not have in true nucleus called as prokaryotic so as you see in the complete table you can pause the video and you can see it that monera are the organisms which are prokaryotic in nature means which do not have any true nucleus protista which are eukaryotic means which do, do have the true nucleus in their body fungi which do have true nucleus in the body plantae which do have true nucleus and the animalia also which do have the true nucleus as far as the cell type is concerned with respect to the nucleus true nucleus only the moneran members do not have the true nucleus hence they are called as prokaryotic in nature the second one is about a cell wall the cell wall composition monera protista fungi plant and animalia having a different composition but only we can see that in case of kingdom animalia it does not have any cell wall here the writing says absent means there is an absence of cell wall in case of the cells of animalian members but in other all the four kingdoms we see different cell wall compositions okay now the next content is the presence of nucleus and on top of it the nuclear layer nuclear covering called as nuclear membrane since in case of monera these are prokaryotic in nature and do not have the true nucleus of course the nuclear membrane is not at all present hence the absence but in case of protista since true nucleus is present the nuclear membrane is present 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 and present now the fourth point body organization body organization means is it of cellular level organization which is of only one cell two cell three cell or many cells is it a group of cells called as tissue level organization or is it a group of tissues called as organ level organization or multi cellular organization etc etc the moneran members are generally unicellular in a nature hence the name the cellular level protistans are also unicellular eukaryotic organisms hence the name cellular fungi these are multicellular organisms the first category which is saying as multicellular in nature and as far as plantae and animalia we can once again see the multicellular nature and the last one is mode of nutrition mode of nutrition is nothing but the intake of food how the food is produced so as far as the plantae in the entire list plantae are see here the plantae are autotrophic in nature 
what is the meaning of autotrophic autotrophic is nothing but creation of their own food for their growth and development we even see some organisms such as the moneran members and the protistan members that they can prepare their own food for their growth and development i already told you the meaning of chemosynthesis and photosynthesis i even told you the saprophytic nature and parasitic nature which was there in the previous video see here kingdom fungi and kingdom plantae these are completely heterotrophic organisms which means that these organisms are completely dependent on other organisms for their growth and development so dear students i hope you understood a smaller introduction about different kingdoms creation and what were the different reasons to create these different kingdoms there were different uh, reasons characterizations points and there were different problems disadvantages and a lot of demerits also i hope you understood this particular video about the introduction to different kingdoms of classifications okay we'll meet you in the next video that is a promise until that time be safe and study well see you very soon thank you very much